Hi folks. Welcome to another edition of Bluff 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 or edition, what would you call it? I always say edition, yeah. It's probably an episode. You always sound really surprised as well that we're here doing another <laughs> one. <laughs> um, this, in this episode, Bob, yeah. um, I thought I'd do a little sort of update, a catch up on the lower level station. This is um, stuff happening. I know. So I thought I'd do kind of a rewind it a couple of a month or so and just try and give you an idea of how we've got to this sort of stage here. A little recap. Yeah, basically. Nice. Um, I I have got, a, you know, massive, like, loads of things I could have put in this video, but... Yeah. Don't like, overwhelm me. Yeah, well, one, exactly. Then. So, well, actually, we've got another one to do next weekend as well, next okay, week. So, cool. you know, I've got... Well, you had a bit of time off, haven't you? You've been tinkering. Well, yeah, it's not just that. It's just... Um, you got to, where do I draw the line of the, this video? So I thought we'd do the station in this video, and then yeah. next wow, week... Wow, this has come on leaps and bounds, hasn't Next it? week we'll take a look at um, the upper level, which we now started working on, which is quite exciting. But, uh, yeah, th there you go. Look at this. So what have we got? We've got some stones in between the tracks. Ballasting, although I haven't covered that in this video, so okay, that's literally that. the got first <laughs> thing. <laughs> Ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> got paddles? No, I haven't done that either no, in this video. We've got a bridge. Basically, Bob, in this video, we've covered some. You're going to have to help me out if you're going to yeah, throw it off on me. Like so this. Covered, we're covering some of the weathering we've done on the platform. Yeah, it looks good. On the, the rails where I've glued the track down. Um, and there's a, a fairly moderate sized thing about the brickwork, okay. like the walls. Um, Which are looking good. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with how they turned out, considering it's my first effort at scratch building. Oh, and we've covered... Our... Oh, have we got some detritus on the go now yeah, at last? I've, Excellent. I've done a bit on that as well. So I'm quite That's pleased with how this is... kind of our hallmark, isn't it? Yeah. Detritus. The kind of... The SP for this lowest level is it's the kind of station you don't really want to get off at or on that. Um, dingy, dark. Yeah, we spent all our time on it. Yeah. Do you like that little, little transition? That? So, wow. rewind to probably December. Yeah. And that's how it was looking. Um, <clears throat> the, scratch built? The, yeah, the wall, the retaining walls are scratch built. So, cool. um, the framework, I suppose you'd call it, the, the structural part of them is um, mount board. So, I think it's what two mil thick my 1.6 mil thick something like that mount board it's called bought it on amazon Is that kind of got that textury stuff? well that's yeah i mean i just wanted something that was fairly substantial yeah. sort of cardboard and what i did was um i'm not gonna sit here and pretend that i built it i made it all with a knife and a ruler i, I got one of these jobbies it's a quick cut machine you got one of these yes Oh. Yeah, so you bang in, you draw, you draw it up, and then it cuts it out basically. Oh wow! So I designed it on the computer using. Did you do a CAD? Real life? Well, no, you just use the free software with oh. it. But I made took the measurements, you know, try and get something that looks half sensible because it's a retaining wall. It kind of needs to lean back a bit, so that's why I thought I'd engineer those, you know, vertical towers in as well. Took sizings from some existing. Um, products like the backman retaining walls so you know the the, the gap between each um reinforcing tower pillar whatever you want to call it's it realistic it's about it's about you know it sort of looked about right um so yeah and then obviously it cuts it out so it needed a bit of finishing with a yeah nice yeah. shot Knife and a, yep. that's a lovely ruler. That's not the one you accuse me of stealing. <laughs> just, just, just so you know. Much and I've got you, I've got you one of them. You sat out there in the workshop, so you don't come with me with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's definitely my room. Um, so yeah, and obviously engineered a bit of relief into those upper panels. So you, the the bit you see there, you know. Oh yeah, nice. So you get a bit of a bit of shape. That's to a it. clever bit of kit, that. 
Well, I, the kit just did the hard work. I did the designed it. Don't let the kit take all the credit not, for it. Jamie, don't try to under. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, try... well done for designing Thanks. it. That's all I wanted. I just wanted your acceptance. <laughs> Um, oh, Lee. But also, Your I did joint the, efforts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Superb. Uh, they're my first efforts at Tunnel Mouth. So obviously, they've changed slightly since then, but that's yeah. all done on the machine as well. You just get a nice. Is that card as well? Then it's not plastic. In this picture, it's plastic. Right, but, and then you've redone them with yeah, the machine. Yeah, since since this, I've, I've, cool. I've redone them. So once you you know cut out the cardboard element, you then get your Slater's plastic card embossed brick yeah. in English bond. Bond. Have another little measure up because obviously the front faces are going to be slightly wider now. So you've got to take into account the thickness of the card as it comes up. Yeah. Just change the literally all there are is rectangles on the on the software. Change it up, pop them in the printer, cut them all out, stick them on. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> That's literally all I did. Really? <laughs> yeah, we actually had a genuine discussion about bricks and things, didn't we? Well, yeah. Well, it's before committing to it, there was yeah. a lot of. I'm in an R in about how I was going to tackle it, but I think I'm, I'm quite pleased with how. For my first real effort, I'm quite pleased with how it, they turned out, to be honest. Yeah. Um, We're obviously keeping well lubricated obviously, at all times. Yeah. Um, it's very important not to get dehydrated no, whilst modelling. Of course not. <laughs> it's very it's important. very time consuming. People forget to rehydrate. Yeah, it is important. Um, <laughs> other beers are available. No point in those there. No. Not really. Um, so, yeah, this, and what I did, again, I've stuck this to a just a wadge of foam, yeah. believe it or not, and cut out some rocks at the top. I didn't film any of that because I didn't know how it was going to turn out, to be quite honest with you. And that's just going to form a bit of bushing and, and what have you up the top there. Whoa, what's that? Do you like that? It's getting trendy yeah, by the day. So uh, that's... Going backwards. Going, we've gone back in time <laughs> again as well, because we kind of, you flip from one thing to another, do you know what I mean? So the time came to fix the track permanently on this section. Yeah. So I'll just use, um, uh, I think it's Gorilla Glue I used there, or maybe it was Mod Podge. Just like, at PVA is fine, just to... A lick of paint on there, put some weight on it, leave it to dry, and then once it's fixed down, you can have a look at start weathering it. Options historically, you, can, you know, the magazines tell you to give it just a puff over with brown paint, which is a good, quick, easy yeah. thing. Um, but then it takes a lot of cleaning up, so I didn't, and all the sleepers are then one colour. I thought, no, I don't really want that. So on this occasion, what I decided to do was take to it with some sleeper grime. It's just just basically a, a grimy brown colour. Yeah. And paint it on with a paintbrush. So you're only really doing the sides. Just doing the sides at this yeah. stage. Because I kind of think, when I when I look at this, and I think the track's gone down new and the weathering's hit it afterwards and it hits it in, di in different stages, if you think about how it happens yeah. in real life. And also the tyre of the, the, the train will always keep the top surface. Well, yeah, pretty. yeah. But silvery. My kind of my vibe is yes. At this stage, it's good to get that the the colour in there because with, by the time you've ballasted and that, it makes it more difficult. Yeah, of course. What I want is then to get the ballast and everything down, and even the greenery that we've got on the one side and the platforms, and then throw some of the web, you know, the browns and whatever. Well, definitely, down. especially if you're going to do it this way and brush it on. If you've got ballast, I was just going to stick to the yeah. brush. But the you know, I want it as if it's been put down. Because the ballast again will go down before the dirt arrives from the from the locos yeah. and the um, whatever else causes it to be there. What's that? It's, it's a stirry thing. It's, it's a stirrer. It's a tiny stirry. Oh, there's some mould peril later on involved <laughs> in the <laughs> stirrer. Mould peril. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know, you probably like me. You shake it. Well, you're not supposed to. What? Shake your paint. You're not supposed to shake it. And I'll tell you for why. Go on. You shake it. Well, not so much that. You shake it, take the lid off, put the lid to one side, and then you use your paint. Where the paint sits in the lid, it dries slightly. So when you put the lid back on, you get hard bits, which gives you lumps, which gives you problems in the future. Ah. I've now See, started I've to ma the... mix it up with different colours now. Sorry, just... Yeah, that's fair enough. I was going to say, these um, are these these rail paints? Rail match, yeah. 
also, like you say, shape the paint and you put the lid on it hard and you can't get the lid off. No, yeah. <laughs> because literally, even if you try and use your teeth, you yeah, cannot yeah. get the thing off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I really struggle with getting that stuff through an airbrush as well. I bet you'd have, that's enamel anyway, isn't it? I no, think. no, no, it's acrylic, I think. The yellow I bought was an enamel. Was it? I think, yeah. I'm fairly sure they're acrylics. Let's not fall out about it. Well, no, it could be two different products. Yeah, it could be, yeah. That yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the scenic area kind of stops about the, just after that point for the yeah. lower level. So I haven't really gone much further. And than what that, are you cleaning the top of the track? Just a block. I've got a block. Yeah. Um, look at that. We've leapt straight into the platform now. This is what happens when I edit it on a Sunday night over <laughs> a couple of beers. Uh, 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 Yes, I clean the tops of the tracks with a block, sanding yeah. block type cool. thing that you get from Gage Master. So to weather the platform edges, I'm using the, as we spoke about earlier, pop it on and take it off. Yeah. Jobby. So that's uh, AK Interactive, just a grey wash. So I'm just getting the grey wash on there and handily off camera, <laughs> <laughs> taking it off using the thinners. Um, so in theory, the grime's going to stick in the corners. In the corners, yeah. you know, that's where, where grime accumulates. Yeah, of course. And I believe now we've skipped forward a huge passage of time, just so the viewers know. <laughs> the puddles is a mixture of PVA and uh, gloss varnish. Yeah, they were the wicked. platforms. Because you'd get that, didn't you? People yeah, yeah. kind of, I like that, thought, you know, thought mm. process. Because we were chatting, didn't we? Yeah. Did we have patches and... Well, Ultimately, that will come. You yeah. know, I've got a bit of a thing where I flit about. So now what I'm doing, we had this section of, you know, between the wall and the track. Yeah. I didn't just want it to be flat because nothing's ever just flat. And I, would, in everything, I always try and add a bit of terrain and texture. So a bit of das clay, air dry clay, just to make it a bit, you know, not billiard table smooth yeah, yeah, yeah. and I always find get a bit of PVA or Mod Podge or whatever down and then put the clay on top stops it cracking and lifting at the edges you, yeah. you can feather it out with your with a moist finger mm -hmm. um, and also then you start getting the glue mix into the clay as well which just helps it all sort of stick down that might be nonsense but that's what I've found works if it works it works yeah in the end day um but it, you can't, it's just a, such a small part of the layout, but it's made such a difference now it's done and, and <clears throat> covered in um, grass and all the other stuff that it's covered in. Also, if you've done a little bit, it kind of spurs you on, I guess, you think, well, that looks cool, yeah. so let's... Um, I mean, I mean, you've got to break it up. You can't yeah. just do everything and then do the next no, one. No, I'm, I'm enjoying... Jumping back and forth. I mean, I sent you that video at the weekend or the last week. And we hit a milestone in that we finished the wiring on the bottom level. <laughs> yeah, which was a massive milestone, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I actually replied to you. On that you one. did, yeah. Because it was very rare. I was very happy for you. Yeah, but it was it was an auspicious moment. <laughs> The wiring on the bottom level's finished, and then you think, right, remember that day. I'm going to crack on up the top now, and then all of a sudden, this the only insulated frog turnouts on the entire blooming layout start shorting out when the loco goes over it. That's a story for another day. <laughs> they, they, they like to fight you, these. <laughs> like any hobby, I suppose. Got a good selection of pots on the go as well. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Well, I, haven't really, I haven't really done a pot watch recently. <laughs> but, uh, so now, now the clay is dry. Uh, we're going to layer up some brown paint on there, obviously, as a base coat. When doing scenics, I like to pop a bit of glue in my paint. Why is that? I don't know. I was thinking about this earlier. Why do I put glue in my paint? Don't I can't, know. I can't answer that question. But it seems to work. I think, I think, I think what happened, when you start putting stuff on top and spraying it, the isopropyl alcohol, it kind of wakes the paint, it tacky wakes again. the paint up and then it sticks in better. Fair enough. I think. That might just be nonsense. Who knows? We're both shrugging our fingers. We are. Our saying. shoulders here. <laughs> it's just something that I do and I don't really know why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because paint is sticky. Paint is by sticky. its definition. It is. And this oh, is something else I do. Sand? I always pop a bit of sand in. 
Now this, I think there's a good reason for it. I like just, I like just. All right. It gives a bit. Yeah, it gives a bit, just a bit of texture to something that otherwise would be paint. Paint on some. So ultimately, if you get a bear patch or whatever, you know the the static. As in the kids' trendy bear patch, or as in nothing there. As in nothing there. I'm really confused by what you mean. Um, uh, right, you bear, know, the kids, kids say bear. Say, yeah, but we're not kids. No, we're certainly not. No. So that means I can now flag this video up as appropriate for kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, talking he's about. talking wild trendy <laughs> bro. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. It's dash um, your train model, bro, isn't it? Uh, lost my train of thought. Oh, now. silly. <clears throat> You're doing something. No, you've ruined it. No, I've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> gone for another pot. Oh uh, yes. So once the once the sand had dried in mm. to the paint, I'm just now throwing down some different shades of brown again. Just so the base level, you've got the different colours and things going on. Yeah. So if any of the static grass doesn't stick or the scatter or anything, what's beneath there is essentially mud and can be believed as being mud. Yeah, nice. Nice touch. It's a lot of effort for something that you might not see any of it, but at least then if you do lose a bit, it, it, it still looks half sensible underneath. And the colours I was using there are just shades of brown and greeny brown. Mix them all in together. In a, that's, I've moved away from my pots. This that is looks plastic. like I probably had some yeah, model some figures sort of or something. Of, that had uh, cumin in it, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I found I like to do is put some of these scatters in, into a herb. And Bob, come on. I've, now I can't mark it suitable for children. <laughs> now, Clearly I? not. Um, <sighs> and, yeah, I like to mix it so it's not all one colour again. Yeah. Um, in one of those herb shakers. And yeah. Just a uh, sort of slightly neater way of applying it. Good idea of use of something that you'd probably throw away. To exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, and well, it, imagine if you've got like a salt or pepper grinder. Yeah. And... Yeah. There you go. Then sure. I'm going to try that. <laughs> so fairly random with the glue. Which is what you want to do. Yeah. So we've got some muddy patches. We've got some texture. So you wouldn't use your flocker for this? This is literally just a scatter. So this right, is okay. a, what goes underneath the the um, the grass, as it were. Yeah. Yeah, variation of tones and sizes. Again, that's down on the glue. Isopropyl. Wake her up with some isopropyl. Now. Can you still get that now? Is it? You can get it readily now. Okay. I fell on my own sword a bit there because where I've sprayed it with isopropyl and obviously there was glue in the paint. Yeah. All those random patches I did were for nothing because... It didn't just merge into one. Yeah. <laughs> so inspired by um, Mr. Dibs of uh, Instagram and now YouTube fame, he did a little guide on making your own uh, brambles. Oh, um, yeah. So, nice. you know, we did the fish tank filter... Yeah. shrubbery some time ago well it's a refinement of that so I thought well, I'm going to have another little pop of that after watching his video so what I've done is painted some fish tank filter brown teased yeah. it out and what I was annoyed with was the gaps underneath the bottom of the wall because ultimately with all of this it's removable whether it's because whether I move house or I need to be able to access behind it I want to be able to take it apart fairly yeah. easily so that isn't fixed, that wall, it's removable. So to hide the gap, we're going with the down the brambles route. Great idea, just, which is very realistic. Yeah, just using, so that's teased out fish tank, but you can see some sitting on the track there. Clever. Um, just glued down with your good old Mod Podge. So good glue, that. If you ever do have any modelling gluing needs, get some Mod Podge on. So fetched it out. Now look, the wall... Remember you mocked me for buying small leaves almost a year ago from Roxley Models. <laughs> I don't think I mocked you. I just you raised your fun. eyebrows as if to say, why have you bought double O gauge leaves? <laughs> this, Robert, is why. We give a <laughs> Right, I'm intrigued. Give the... What's that? Um, What's that that's hairspray? hairspray. Give oh. the fish tank filter a spray with the hairspray and sprinkle on your leaves. Hairspray. Yeah. Sprinkle on your leaves. Wow. 
There you go. Different, just varying tones. And what I, you know, your silence speaks volumes. <laughs> I, I didn't, I don't think I was mocking you. I just thought it was a, a an interest. I didn't even know the product existed. That's no. what blew me away. So you, our man Dibs uses, um, he made his own leaves, but yeah. using actual leaves. Um, really? What, just sort of crushing them Yeah, up yeah, yeah. But I know that I bought double O gauge leaves and that you really were impressed with them. So what I'm doing now <laughs> is recreating them muddy bits with a yeah. bit of brown in there, so as if people have trod there and what have you. There's a lot of products here. So if you're doing something this size, it's best to buy everything in bulk. It's stuff I've bought for the last three or four layouts that I've started and thrown away. <laughs> You know, when you go into a model shop and feel, I've got to buy something, I need to buy something. I'll you buy get all some. flustered I do, when you go to model shops. You know what, it's been nearly a year, though, since yeah. been. But I end up buying, nine times out of ten, I buy some dark olive <laughs> clump foliage. I must have about six or seven <laughs> bags of the stuff. So, just to mix it up now. <laughs> and to cover the gaps. So, between the brambles, we're going with some clump foliage. Because nature is random. It is. Beautifully round. As you'll see on the wall as well, I've applied some foliage and, and, and what have you to that. Um, again, A, it hides some sins, and B, um, you get stuff growing on walls. And it's all detachable. Yeah. Awesome. How long did that take you? You're in all day to mess well, up? Well, it was that? over a period of several weeks, so probably only a couple of hours. I like that you asked me that question. You always do. I didn't think to ask that question. But... Well, because what in real life, yeah. so you can see your hand compared to so that is only what? 30, 40 centimetres long, that bit? Probably a bit bit longer. <laughs> Maybe a tiny bit longer. Yeah, about this, I suppose this section here, yeah, probably about 40 centimetres long. But it's worth spending the time, I suppose you've yeah, got to yeah. bear in mind drying times and things yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. So what I've just done there, just to yeah. to consolidate the bits and bobs we put in, it's a watered down PVA water mixture. Just flood the area with it. It just keeps it all in place. And just pop in some just some litter in there at this stage. So you've got some, not just sitting on top, but some litter underneath the other stuff. Yeah, so, barrels. Yeah, here we've cut quite sharply. To uh, <laughs> I'm going to go back in the edit, Bob, and put a fade in. Um, so you put all your wiring in. Yeah, so that's scale model scenery wiring along the back there. These are um, just cabinets that I've weathered up a bit. Just playing with, you know, rubbish that might have found its way there. A bit further up there, you see some railway yeah, track. Yeah, I spotted that. An old, bit of an old... See, this is the bit I love. Yeah. It's the detail. So now this, I'm throwing some glue in, and I'm just going to throw some static grass down. Just, again, just another, another texture. texture, another yeah. variation of the theme. Um, i do it the wrong way round here, just to test... The not to test the tool, it's just because I had messed it up, if I'll be honest. The best way is to go short grass than the longer grass, but because there was still longer grass in the applicator, and I've gone straight in with the long. Silly. Um, but by the time I've hoovered it up and had another go, the best way to do grass is start, in my opinion, start with the shorter grass and then use your layering sprays or, you know, for hairspray for, you know, and then start with the shorter stuff. Right. Uh, sorry, they start getting longer with it, so then the grass gets thicker each time, stands up, um, and generally looks better. Do you not put the old tights over the front of that and try and save? I do ordinarily, but what I used, what the grass I used there, I've saved about 14 times anyway, so it was mainly right. dust and bits of old wire. <laughs> <laughs> Crumbs. <laughs> so I just thought, do you know what? Can't save that any more times. Um, wow, look at that. And this is now, <clears throat> our man Dibs as well did some ivy, but before he reached a new mont with his ivy, I got impatient and bought some. I Googled it and bought some. This has come from Germany, Mini Nature. Right. Again, I just wanted to hide the, the gap. So that was just hiding the gap between, as you see here, look, the retaining really wall and the, and the tunnel section. 
Got a sign up. Made the sign, 3D printed the sign. There you go. Um, that's um, MG Montego, is it? My yeah. Friend. That's from Graph Rail. He does some wicked stuff, yeah. doesn't he? Um, <clears throat> and I've started work on this trestle bridge, trellis bridge, whatever you so want to call it. So bought in, is it? I've, I've bought it in and then modified it to make it... I've been, I've been annoying Steve <laughs> so much with that bridge because he obviously has got a better idea of how it should be. And so I just, I'm, I'm sorry, Steve, if you're watching, but I do um, keep on at him. Asking for advice. Seat mold right. peril it fell apart. Oh, no. Just to get <laughs> I left it in because it happens, doesn't it? So this is just this is a guide on how I do my bricks. I can't believe you've got a mini mixer for your You paint. need it. This paint you've got to mix it bro. Are you doing it by hand? Yeah. <laughs> this is an enamel paint and you need you need to mix it up. Do you know what? A super glue. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Look at the stack of it. <laughs> Don't do this on your nice. So that the, 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 um, <laughs> yeah, the, the so yeah. one of them things that you got to look at. What do you see? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, yeah, sorry. That um, is it. Slater's plastic card embossed brick sheet glued onto cardboard as before. A, a light coat of primer, just grey primer from Halfords or other motor factors, whatever. Yeah. And then this is. Phoenix Paints Engineers Blue, and I'm just brush it on, but try and keep in vertical strokes for obvious reasons. So, yeah. where my thumb is at that end is it's the a top. Blue, is it? It's a bluey, yeah, it is. Oh, right. It's Apparently a very. You can see it in that light, yeah. It, nice. Yeah, it's an engineer. They're engineers blue bricks, essentially, is what it's trying to replicate. Right. But where my thumb is, that will be the top of the pier, so I'm trying to keep it in vertical strokes. It's a very oily enamel paint this and you kind of see it's mm. quite oily on this occasion I didn't doing this I haven't let it dry long enough I will admit you need to leave it a couple of days but I didn't I wanted to get this done for this video so they dried for a day so now we're using something to represent mortar so this that is weathered stone from again from rail match paints it's a it's an acrylic paint you thin it down a bit of water. Thin it down with a bit of water and then just larrup it on. Again, we're working vertical. I, I, get, I think I probably used a bit too much water because you can see it's kind of gathering in places and then when you lean it on its side, <laughs> <laughs> you come back to it and there's a great big, really thick bit where it's... So my advice is don't do it as I've done it here. Do one flat surface. at See, look there. One flat surface at a time. Wait for it to dry. Do you then wipe it off? I will do, yeah. yeah. Um, but you want it thin enough so it goes into the embossed part. Yeah. But not too thick that it's then a nightmare to take off. Yeah, when I did that little hut for the mm. uh, scrapyard, it was the same sort of thing. Yeah. That's it dry. And I thought, first of all, I'm going to try isopropyl alcohol mixed with water because I've seen, we were discussing it earlier, weren't we? The me we weathering methods of put it on and then take it off. Didn't work for me. So I went back to the enamel thinners because the base layer is enamel. It doesn't hurt that. Yeah. Um, but what it does do is take the um, top of the acrylic level layer off. So that's acrylic thinners then? No, no, that's enamel thinners. Oh, acrylic thinners didn't take it off either. Right, okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But again, we're I working... think you probably would have to wipe that off while it's still wet and just leave whatever's in. Yeah, there, there people do. That's how I would. Yeah, try. but then you you do end up as careful as you are dragging it out of the. Well, yeah, I suppose. <clears throat> I mean, I've left it quite pale because I wanted the bricks to be pale, as it were. Um, but you still get there is a you know the definition of the brickwork there. So now what I'm doing is just adding some various greens and browns. Um, streaking coming from the top and also sometimes you don't see it I don't, I don't think people do it enough but the dirt that splashes up on the bottom yeah almost you get as rising, much yeah, yeah you get as much coming from the bottom as you do up from down at the top so I don't know yeah it's coming together now not too it? much wipe it off just so you've got just varying amounts of staining I think uh, there's no right or wrong no no Keep it random. 
dragging it about with the tissue as well helps. There's going to be uh, eventually platforms, or that's not the right word, but like a flat cap co coping stone, capping yeah. stone on the top there, so they'll you get a get it dribbling down from there. Bit of green. Throw a bit of dry brush, a bit of brown on it. Again, just keep it random. These uh, little kits are good, don't they, with the paints as yeah. well? Real good colours. Vertical strokes. I know you're your strongest with your vertical strokes, aren't you, Bobby? Uh. <laughs> this is, I like this kit. It's moss and lichen. Um, nice. Just a real fine scatter, I suppose. You could probably make a very similar product great in a dishwasher sponge or something, you know. Uh, is this actual like little, ah, uh, yeah. right, okay, I see. You know, the, 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 the scrub, scrubby bit you yeah, get on the sponge. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's pretty much, in a nutshell, how we do that. And that's that bit there supporting the girder there. Oh, it's dried nicely. Yeah. I could tell you weren't that impressed initially, but I think No, no, it's... no, well, I, just, I was trying to work out, <laughs> yeah. but now that looks wicked, yeah. And this, you know, we're nearly at the end of this one now, Bob. That, this is, this literally was filmed last night. Brilliant. And so this is exactly where we are. You'll see on the... I like the fact you haven't overdone the grime on the bottoms of the platform. Well, no, but it's just yeah, right. It's yeah, dirty right, enough. Yeah. Built that bridge the other day. Yeah, sweet. Um, <clears throat> need to weather that up. I'm undecided whether to leave it wood or go like with the trellis, trestle, whatever you want to call it, knob and blue. Um, I think it's got to be painted. Yeah. Or even silver, so it looks like a metal, like a galvanised bridge. Right. I made saying you had those one of those laser cut things, didn't I for you? I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Oh, well, it was the steps that went up to the top of yes. the diesel. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. I used um like gun metal silver to make right. it look galvanized. It's got wood texture on the on some of the like the planking, so I don't know, can I mix it up? Yeah. It's a nice thing. What's this? Bully diesel. I had that a couple of years. Got it for my birthday a couple of years ago, but I've just literally fitted sound to it. As you can see, we've got some trains running up the top. <laughs> you, how are you feeling about my pan in there? Just, I'm liking it. You know. You've been practising, obviously. Yeah. Or have you got a new gizmo? Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, it's, you know, the track is literally only rested in place at the moment up the top there, but couldn't resist. How's the um, incline now? It's 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 okay. It's still a work in progress. So there, there we, we, we that was really good. I'm pleased with how it's coming on. Yeah, can't wait to this, get some greenery on that. Is that I was going to say the rocky rocky bit up the top? Yeah, and do bits. With I that. will be. I literally haven't committed to it Why yet. Why have you done it already? Because of the reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, done. all in all, you know. Next week as well. When we'll get, you, we'll do another one next week. Fairly swiftish because I'm not sure you how we're getting on with the top. And I'll actually share with you how the overall layout, is, the plan that we remember I showed you that tiny yeah, little did, bit. Yeah, yeah. We'll look at the whole thing and see how it's going to shape up. Awesome. So now, quickly, um, I think we're going to start just giving a bit of a plug to our fellow social media people. Yeah, good just idea. Just wanted to give a little shout to uh, Bunter's Yard this week, his YouTube channel. Some great little vids on there, Bob. You should have a watch, actually. I haven't seen these guys he, yet. Um, I like his current series, his new series, where he buys like eBay cheap wagons and things like that and turns them from something that's like a 50p throwaway, something, some of them ones like I bought in that box of stuff. That mm -hmm. time. And he weathers them up and just turns them into something that looks half sensible. Pops them back on eBay again. Good idea. 3D prints, loads of cool stuff. I bought that uh, Land Rover in the wagon, Bob yeah, Land Rover. Yeah, that's wicked. Yeah, he did one with Willis Jeeps on a, on a really cool. So he's doing some really cool stuff, some really nice videos on his channel. So um, we'll do a little click through link on the video here. Guys, make sure you go and check his work out. Um, yeah, shout out to... Uh, to him, I don't know his real name, so we call him Bunter's Yard. Well done, Bunter's Yard. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, seriously, yeah. uh, great little channel. Yeah, and I, I, I'm quite. Yeah. I'm watching his little weather and tips videos as well. Quite inspiring for people like you and me that like making stuff look dirty and, <laughs> and horrible. Wicked. Not that it's horrible. Do you know no, what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah. There you go. There we go. I think that's it. There. Do you want to do the? Yeah. So once you've subscribed, if you haven't already subscribed to us, please do. We really appreciate it. We've just tipped over the thousand. We have, haven't we? Which we're insurmountably <laughs> proud of. So thanks to everyone that has. Um, it's pretty got amazing. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Considering we're t literally talk a load of old nonsense, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is a miracle. But uh, yeah, Imagine thanks. If we didn't talk nonsense, we'd probably have more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we will try it, just with like birds singing and what have you in the background. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, thanks everybody. Please check us out if you haven't already on Facebook or on Instagram. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll be back again next week with a, another update. Excellent. Like. Buses, none come along and then two at once. That's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have for dinner tonight then. I don't know. We've gone too early to have dinner now. Uh, what's this? This is still the fancy promo, you know it is. Oh! Look. Look. Just, just gently reminding people. You're getting people. quite good at all this malarkey. I know. Yeah. Now it's time to talk uh, about what right. I've got for dinner. Cheers, tonight. folks. Thanks yeah, for thanks for watching, you. guys. <laughs> 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 Instantly, I think it's chicken kids. <laughs> <laughs>